Welcome on into the Gateman pregame show on the Gateman Baseball Network. My name's Henrique DeMore. To my right, J.D. Rochi. To my left, Cam Stewart. We've got a doubleheader on the way for you against the Orleans Firebirds. First time these two teams will be playing all year. Two seven-inning games coming at you in a bit. The Gateman suffered their first loss of the year, 2-0 at the hands of the Mariners last night. The first time we've done a game uh, or any sort of show uh, post-loss. Guys, takeaways from yesterday's game. Well, really, it was just came down to the fact that the Gateman offense couldn't get it going yesterday. Up until the eighth inning, the only hit of the day was second batter of the day. Skyler Hunter lays down a bunt single, gets it down and reaches first base. After that, until the eighth inning, we didn't see another hit. And then even through the eighth and ninth, we only saw four more. So it really was a struggling a struggling day for the offense for the Gateman. They really just couldn't get anything going against the Harwich pitching. Credit the Harwich pitching, really. They were really fantastic in that game. A couple of great outings from Ty Buckner and a couple of other guys out of the bullpen. Danny Poitamani actually looked really good for Harwich after picking up the loss in the last game, the last time we were here at Spillane, the Harwich Mariners, that loss, uh, the walk-off from Bryant Packer, Danny Poitamani picked up the loss in that game, but he looked really good. Really, the Harwich pitching all day was just fantastic, and the Gateman offense, which had been so effective and so dangerous and through the first four games of the season, just really couldn't get the job done yesterday, and that's why you saw them fall 2-1. to one. Or excuse little, me, two to nothing. Yeah, it was a little bit of an off day for, I mean, Skylar Hunter. We saw production from the top of the lineup. He went two for four, but Andrew Vaughn had an off day today, or yesterday. He showed that he is, in fact, human. 0 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts. Cam, your thoughts on the game yesterday? The game men were just never comfortable at any point in the game yesterday. It started out early. Easton Lucas didn't look sharp, but he was keeping them in the game. It was only one nothing for a long time, and he was getting out of some big jams, as you can remember. It could have been easily 4 5 nothing. They were trailing, but he kept getting out of it. But like J.D. mentioned, only one hit for the first six innings or so, so the Gateman really couldn't get things going. And when they started putting guys on base in the later innings, it was walks, it was hit by pitches, and they weren't able to get that big hit to move them over. So they weren't comfortable. Andrew Vaughn didn't look his best last night for sure. It was an at-bat and I believe, the seventh or eighth inning where he had two guys on base, and he knew he just missed a full count offering that he popped up to the second baseman for an out. So that's where you expect Andrew Vaughn to come through. We've seen him come through quite a bit so far in the early season. So not just him, but... That was definitely a deflating moment for the Gateman in that game. And you mentioned the fact that, you know, it could have been a lot worse for the Gateman. Harwich left more than 10 guys on base in the game, but again, the Gateman left 10 guys on base as well. That's been a consistent problem for this team all season long. It's not so much getting guys on, but it's getting them around the base paths. This team is very disciplined on the offensive end. Everybody looks at... at pitches out of the zone. Everybody has almost an eagle eye. We've seen it from Dominic Clemente and Isaac Collins. Those are two that really stick out. But even Andrew Vaughn, one of the best hitters in all of in the all of all of the Cape League and all of college baseball this season, even he has a great eye. So really what the Gateman need to work on today against the Orleans Firebirds is once you get guys on base, get them around and get them in to score. Now looking ahead uh, to the pitching as in the backdrop of yesterday's game, the Gateman did only give up two runs. It was a 2-0 final score, as we said, um, and the starter was fine. But, I mean, Tyler Kaiser, I think, was the story yesterday. Through eight batters he faced, he struck out five. And it's good to have those guys that can go long relief appearances, as Tyler Kaiser did yesterday. Um, he was another positive on the pitching end. Do you guys have any initial thoughts? Yeah, I thought Kaiser was great yesterday, as you said. Just looked comfortable. He's kind of Jekyll and Hyde through his first couple of appearances in the preseason and into the regular season here. So I think a lot of us didn't know what we had in Tyler Kaiser here in Wareham. But, I mean, it was just one of those Cape League games, right, where it's a close game and you got one guy finishing off the last three or four innings like Connor Lund did a few nights ago here. And he was just excellent. He kept them in the game. Can't say enough about that Gateman bullpen, just leaving guys on, stranded on base and, and keeping the Gateman in the game last night. And J.D., how about that fastball last night for Kaiser? Kaiser was absolutely fantastic. He talked about the fastball. He's six foot six, almost 250 pounds or so. So that's a big guy, big frame coming downhill to these batters. He throws the fastball hard. And last night, unlike his first outing of the season, located the fastball well and was just getting swings and misses. We talked to him post game. He was our player of the game yesterday because of those five strikeouts across eight batters. And he said, you know, it just seemed like my fastball was working last night. It, was, it seemed like I was being able to blow the pitch by the uh, Harwich Mariners batters. They just couldn't catch up to the fastball. So if you maybe seen a little bit more of that from the starter and the uh, second relief guy in Easton Lucas and then Cody Carroll yesterday, you might have had a very different outcome because Tyler Tyler Kaiser absolutely shut down the Harwich lineup. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get into the Orleans Firebirds here on the final Father's Day matchup on the bump. We'll see some familiar faces and some unfamiliar ones on either side. Mary Orders also has some sideline interviews for us. Don't go away. You're not going to want to miss a great edition of the Gateman pregame show. 
Make sure you sign your child up today for the Gateman Robertson's GMC Youth Clinics. This year we have five one-week sessions for children 5 to 14. We also have two special sessions for hitting and pitching open to teens. Registration is available online at gateman.org or through forms available at the merchandise booth. Stop by our Gateman concession stand and support both the Gateman and the Wareham High School DECA program. The Gateman wish to thank Patty Wild and the trustees of the John Wild Charitable Trust for their continued support of Gateman Baseball in Wareham. Welcome back to the Gateman pregame show on the Gateman Baseball Network. Right now we're going to send it to our sideline reporter, Mary Order. She got to catch up with head coach Don Snedden before today's games. Thanks, guys. I'm Mary Orders here with head coach Don Snedden. Now, Don, we talked during the game yesterday, and you mentioned that hitting was a bit of an improvement area for the Gatemen. Um, what can the guys focus on today to get, try to get on base? Well, they're all good hitters. We just got to find their swing. Again, I've mentioned many times, it's an adjustment with a wooden bat. Um, hits with the, the metal bat are not hits with a wood bat. So there's a smaller sweet spot, and they're going to have to learn to get that sweet spot to the ball. And some takes longer than others. I'm hoping that uh, today we were out early in the cage, and hopefully we got some of those guys that can find that sweet spot a little bit quicker. Definitely. And uh, Matulovic is getting another start today. What are you expecting out of him? Well, what he did last time with that, you know, he's got some good velocities, and uh, hopefully his control gets there. We like to get five innings out of him if possible. Um, and, but that will be determined by his pitch count. Yeah, and lastly, it's hot out today, doubleheader. What do you do differently while coaching in a doubleheader? Uh, drink plenty of fluids. Uh, no, we, it's, it's really no difference. You take one game just like we would any other time, and then you have to release that one and play your second game. I don't like seven-inning ball games. Uh, I would rather play two nine-inning ball games. It just that's what we're trained to do. So this is not one of my favorite uh, having doubleheaders one, but having two seven-inning doubleheaders is – most schools have nine and seven, and that's probably what they should go with, but I don't get to make those decisions. Well, thanks so much, Coach. Back to you guys. Thanks, Mary. Now looking forward to game one. We've got Joey Matulovic on the bump for the Wareham game, and we've seen him before. He opened the season against Chatham at Veterans Field. And across from him, Riley Ornito of San Francisco University for the Orleans Firebirds. J.D., what can you tell us about Riley Ornito? Well, he had a fantastic season this year for the San Francisco Dons. Just over two ERA this year. He, he's got a good fastball, first team all West Coast Conference this season. He played absolutely fantastically after struggling a bit as a freshman at about a 6.14 ERA as a freshman last year with the Don, so a much improved season for Miley Ornito. He'll throw strikes, he'll get you over with a couple of good pitches, a breaking ball, fastball change. He's a good pitcher, somebody you're used to seeing in the Cape League, probably the Don's number one guy, but he hasn't even you know, played this season for, for Orleans through their first four games, so he's their number five starter. So a number one guy, a Friday night starter in college, a number five guy in the Cape, that's just kind of what you get at this point in the Cape Cod Baseball League. We'll see what Ornito can do to transition the Orleans Firebirds coming in today with a 477 TR, 477 team ERA, excuse me. It's good for third to last in the Cape Cod Baseball League. So Ornito looking to right the ship on the pitching side of things. And for the game, and we mentioned it, Joey Matulovic getting his second start of the year. Cam, what can you tell us about Joey? Well, I've been really impressed with Matulovic in his one start this year. Obviously coming off a stellar college season, and he's translated it over into the Cape so far this year. Got the opening night start in Chatham just last week, and he was pretty impressive. He had all his pitches working, four innings, four hits, but no runs and four strikeouts as well. He really had everything going. Loved the fastball that I saw from Matulovic uh, back on Tuesday night. See if he can continue that today against a team that's really struggling to swing the bats. Now the three of us get to talk about Mr. Matulovic, but Mary Orders on our sidelines has more talking with him. We're going to send it to her real quick. Thanks, guys. I'm Mary Orders here with today's starter, Joey Matulovic. Now, Joey, what did you – you started on Tuesday. What did you like from that game? Um, I, it was just nice to get back out there. Um, I don't think I threw particularly great, but it was good enough to get the win, which was which is the main thing. Um, and it was nice to knock the rust off because I haven't thrown in a live game in a while, so it was, that was good. And what do you want to improve on from that game in today's start? I want to clean up the walks. Um, just pound, pound the strike zone and, and – clean up those four walks and I think it'll be good. Um, what do you feel like you've been doing in practice to try to help with that? Um, I've been throwing off the mound a lot, working with Coach Lawler, just trying to get, get things cleaned up and ready to go for today's game. Great, and it's Father's Day today, so anything you would like to say to your dad? I'd like to say Happy Father's Day to Frank Matulovich. He's a legend, love him, and uh, don't know where I'd be without him. Great, thanks so much, Joey. Back to you guys. 
Thanks, Mary. Now looking forward to game two, which will get started just after the, or 30 minutes after the conclusion of game one. For the Orleans Firebirds, we've got an interesting guy, a man from Australia. Josh Hendrickson will be the guy to go for Orleans today. Yeah, he's heading to San Diego next season, but played his ball at Barton Community College this year, and he was absolutely fantastic. How about this? Just about 96 or, or, or so innings pitched, but over 120 strikeouts for the Aussie. A fantastic pitcher. He's going to do big things with San Diego next season, hoping to do big things in game two for Orleans today. And for Wareham, someone that we haven't seen much of, McKinley Moore will get the start today for game two for Don Snedden's club. Cam, tell us a little bit about Mr. Moore. Well, he's not quite from Australia. He plays at the University of Arkansas, Little Rock, kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. But he had a good year for them, and I like the way he's pitched so far for the Gateman in his tenure here. A couple appearances in the preseason. A temp guy who I think really impressed me. He uh, has a really good fastball. I said that about Matulovic, I know, but I think McKinley's might actually be better. Um, he was really getting guys out with that pitch. Strikeout guy. He was getting a lot of Ks during the preseason. I just like the way he's attacked hitters. He's not guy, a guy to waste too many pitches. We'll see how that translates into a start today but he's a, he's a guy who likes to attack hitters, and I really appreciate that in a pitcher. Gateman coming into today's games at 4-1, Orleans at 1-3. Gateman trying to push their league-best 4-1 record to 6-1. Got a four-point lead over the rest of the opponents in the Western Division. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, our sideline reporter, Mary Order, has got to catch up with another guy who's going to see some pitching action probably in Game 2 today, Cade Cavalli. Don't go anywhere. The 2018 Cape League All-Star Game will be played at White House Field, home of the Harwich Mariners. Mark the date on your calendar, Sunday, July 22nd. Game time is 6 o'clock p.m., but the gates open at 2 o'clock. One highlight will be the Cumberland Farms Home Run Hitting Contest. There will also be an autograph session and a large merchandise village with items from many of the teams. Be sure to buy your tickets now right here at the merchandise stand. Tickets are just $5, and part of the proceeds will support our Wareham Gatemen. Welcome back to the Gateman pregame show. I'm Mary Orders here with Cade Cavalli, a pitcher for the Gateman. Now, Cade, it'll be your first time pitching for the Gateman. How yes. are you feeling about that? I feel great. I'm pumped. It's a good opportunity. Ready to get on this bump and compete for the Gateman. I'm excited. Great. And what have you been doing in practice to try to get ready for this game? Um, today we just went through a couple of plyos, and I threw a bullpen two days ago with Coach Lawler, and he just gave me a few pointers, and I'm just ready to get out there and compete. And he'll know what to do what, to help me after – I get my first outing because he hasn't really seen me yet live. So uh, after this start or relief, whatever happens, um, he'll have more like knowledge of me and he'll be able to help me out more. Yeah, and how has it been working with a new coach? It's been awesome. I, I like Coach Lawler a lot. He's uh, he's like, like I said, that bullpen two days ago, he already helped me with my breaking ball, gave me a few pointers on it, and I was throwing it really well. So I'm excited to use it. That's great. And how has it been so far on the Cape? I love it. I actually love small towns. It's, be, it's cool being close to the water. I'm a big fisherman, so I'm, hopefully on my days off here I can get out, fly fish maybe. I don't know. I'm excited. Hopefully tomorrow yeah. you can pitch. Yeah, tomorrow. Um, and lastly, it's Father's Day. Do you have anything to say to your dad? Oh, yes. What's up, Dad? Um, thank you for everything. I love you a lot. Um, I really wouldn't be the man I am and the player I am today without you. I really wouldn't. Great. Thanks so much. Back to you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much again, Mary. As I mentioned, the Orleans Firebirds come into today one and three. Uh, their last loss yesterday was of the 6-2 variety against Katuit on a controversial grand slam by Katuit Cavaliers shortstop Adam Oviedo, who we saw here at Spillane a couple days ago. He had a, he had a grand slam that everybody apparently at Eldridge Park, home of the Firebirds, thought was foul, but the home plate umpire ruled it fair. And it proved to be decisive as the score stayed 6-2. The uh, Firebirds couldn't bounce back offensively from that, so they're trying to get around a little controversy and right the ship here at Spillane. Wareham, like I said, trying to push their league best record to ideally 6-1 and one by day's end. And J.D., what do they have to do to make that happen? Well, we talked about it earlier. I think the key is going to be to this game is going to be getting runners around the base paths. Can't leave runners on base like you have in the first couple of games this season. Pretty much every game we've seen from the Gateman this year, they've hit incredibly well, but they've left so many runners on. When you guys, you got guys at second and third base, runners in scoring position. We saw it last night with a couple of times with Bryson Stott made it all the way over to third, and the Gateman couldn't capitalize. I think you got to capitalize. You can't have double-digit guys left on base happening every single game. That's just not the way you're going to win games in the Cape League. When the pitching is so good and you're able to get runners in scoring position, you've got to continue to push the envelope, continue to take advantage, and get runners into score because there are going to be a lot of low-scoring games this season as the season rolls on. 
We talked about production from the top of the lineup, check. We talked about being more aggressive on the base pass as the season has gone on, check. But if you can't get them over and get them in, what good does it do you? Cam, any thoughts on today's game? Well, I'm going to keep it real simple here. I think the Gatemen just need to put the ball in play more. They're striking out a couple times the last two games, more than we've seen from them in the first week of the season. And for the exception of that one inning in Falmouth, the last two games has been all station-to-station -station baseball. They haven't had that big inning for the exception of the one in Falmouth where they took the lead, but they haven't been able to keep the line moving, get those extra base hits to get a couple guys in. Station-to-station, -station, working, working the count and getting walks is all great and well, but you've got to have that hit to get them in. And we saw it for the first few games of the season, haven't seen it so much in the last two games. So I think it's for the Gateman. Kind of like what you said, the two out hitting, the timely hitting, just get the ball in play, get, knock some ones to the gaps, let's keep this thing going. I'm all about working a good at bat, but eventually you got to get the ball in play. So you heard it from us. We'll see if the Gateman can capitalize and beat the Firebirds today on a Father's Day Sunday afternoon doubleheader. For J.D. Rachi, for Cam Stewart, I'm Henrique Demore. Thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of the Gateman Pre-Game Show.